Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm going to be attempting to fire firearms ammunition from an air rifle. start commenting that this is stupid, dangerous and illegal, I should clarify that despite the fact I'm waving around whole rounds, when I say firearms ammunition I'm just referring to the bullet at the end. Um, I'm not going to be putting a whole live round into an air gun as that clearly would be very stupid, very dangerous and very illegal. And uh, from a logistical point of view it probably wouldn't work anyway as the case wouldn't fit in the air gun and in the absence of a firing pin it'd be very unlikely to fire. Um, with that being said though, I would still advise people not to try this at home as it could be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and it may well result in damage to your air gun. So with that out of the way, why am I doing this? Well, nothing more than curiosity really. In terms of the shooting sports, air guns are generally in quite a small calibre, especially the standard 177 and 22 calibres, but there are proper firearms in the same or similar calibres, so I just thought, could you fire bullets from those guns out of an air rifle? Now, whilst I will be shooting at a target, and I might run a couple over the chronograph if they work, this isn't any kind of meaningful test of their accuracy or power, this is purely a proof of concept video. So, let's take a closer look at some of the bullets I'll be trying. I have three different calibres here, which are 2 2 long rifle, 4.45 by 39mm, developed by the Soviet Union for the use in the AK-74, and this last one is a 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO which was originally designed by the US for the M16 but was then later adopted as one of the standard cartridges for NATO forces. Now I have a couple of each of these to try. Um, I'll have to fire all those from a 2.2 air rifle. I did try and get some 17 HMR which I could have fired from a 177 rifle but I couldn't get hold of any. Now I should point out at this stage that these aren't live rounds, they are inert and they're classified as FFE, which stands for free from explosives, so they're completely safe and legal. Um, the case is empty, as you can see from the bottom, the primer has already been struck. Um, this is essentially just a used case that has had a new bullet put on. Now the first thing I need to do is remove the bullets from the cases. Now I've already done that with half of them to save time. So now I need to do the rest. The 2 2 long rifle can actually just be wiggled out like so but these last two are slightly trickier now I don't want to damage the bullets by just pulling them out with pliers so what I actually then need to do is cut the ends of the cases off and then use a punch to push the bullets out Here I have all of my bullets, as well as a standard 2.2 air rifle pellet for comparison. Uh, this one is an Air Arms Diablo Field pellet. Now there are some immediately noticeable differences. The air gun pellet has a thin waist and flared skirt in the back, whereas all the others are more, for want of a better word, bullet shaped. Now the pellet and the 2.2 long rifle are both plain lead, whereas the others are military rounds, so they are FMJs or full metal jackets. So they have a lead core but a copper jacket around it. Now the bullets are also quite a lot bigger. The air gun pellet is only 7.6 millimeters tall. The 2.2 long rifle is 13 millimeters. The 5.45 by 39 millimeter is 25.3 millimeters tall, and the 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO is 19 millimeters tall. Now with regard to weight, the Air Arms Diablo Field pellet is 16 grains. The 2.2 long rifle is 42.8 grains. The 5.45 by 39mm is 52.4 grains and the 5.56 by 45mm NATO is 55 grains. Unfortunately none of these are going to fit straight into a 2.2 air gun barrel as you can see here. 
And the reason for that is, although they're pretty much the same caliber, caliber is defined by the internal dimensions of the barrel, not the actual projectile. So for example, the dimensions of a 2.2 long rifle bullet are between 2.23 and 2.255 in diameter, so they just won't fit into a, uh, into a standard 2.2 air rifle barrel. Um, yeah, so the 2.2 long rifle is around 2.23, uh, the 5.45 by 39mm is 5.6mm in diameter, and the 5.56 by 45mm NATO is 5.7mm in diameter, so what I'm going to have to do is reduce their diameter slightly. Here I have all of my bullets, which I turned down by putting them in the drill and holding a file against them. And these do all now fit perfectly into the barrel of the gun. Now by doing this I will have taken some off the diameter and also some slightly off the weight, but hopefully not enough that it should make too much difference so I'm not actually going to bother re-measuring them or re-weighing them. Now I've got no idea if this is going to work. All I do know is that it's probably going to damage the rifling in my barrel. And for that reason, I'm using my SMK XS1918, as this gun's already a bit beaten up, so I don't really mind damaging it further. Now, I've got a target set up at my usual distance of 11 or 12 metres, but as I've got no idea where to hold the sights or how much they're going to drop, I've actually got an A3 target, so that hopefully I can at least get something on the paper. Uh, first of all, I'm going to use an Air Arms Diablo Field 2.2 air rifle pellet to lay down a marker. Now the 2-2 long rifle. Now the 4.45 by 39 millimeter. Lastly, the 556 by 45 mm NATO. Here is the target, albeit sideways, as it's still attached to that bit of wood I had it fixed to for shooting. Uh, you could really hear how slow the bullets were travelling by the definite delay between the sound of the gun being fired and the sound of the bullets hitting the target. Now for the pellet, I aimed centrally, but to compensate for the drop caused by the weight of the bullets, uh, for the other three I aimed at the Air Armoury logo at the top up here. Now the 2.2 long rifle hit the top, uh, more or less where I aimed. The 4.45 by 39mm hit here, and the last one, the 5.56 by 45mm NATO, looked and sounded like it hit the board, but I cannot find where at all. Uh, it's possible it missed the board and hit the backstop I had behind it, but then again, I couldn't find a lot of obvious evidence for that either. Now, the bullets do look like they travelled relatively straight, and they don't look like they tumbled and keyholed the target. Now, none of the actual bullets pierced and went all the way through the board. Uh, this one in the middle is from the regular pellet. This one is from the 4.45 by 39 millimeter. This one, which you can just see a split here, is from the 2.2 long rifle. And this other one actually here, you can discount that's from a previous test, not from any of these bullets. Because the bullets didn't go through the board or stick in it, um, I assume they've all ricocheted off. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any of them in the grass, which was a bit disappointing, as I'd wanted to see if they were at all damaged or deformed. Now, as they worked as well as could be expected, I'll try each of them again over the chronograph to see just how slow they were going and I'll also try and retrieve the bullets afterwards to have a look at them. Uh, I'll shoot them in the same order as on the target, so the 2.2 air gun pellet, followed by the 2.2 long rifle, followed by the 5.45 by 39mm, and then lastly the 5.56 by 45mm NATO. That particular SMK XS1918 is not a very powerful rifle, so the pellet only went 374.1 feet per second, which gave it a power of just under 5 foot-pounds. 
the 22 long rifle only registered 191.9 feet per second which gave it a power of 3.5 foot pounds the 5.45 by 39 millimeter went 169.2 feet per second which gave it a power of 3.33 foot pounds but unfortunately the 556 by 45 millimeter NATO failed to register on the chronograph and I think that was due to low light as you can see I managed to retrieve all three of the bullets after the power test and they don't really have a lot of damage the 2.2 long rifle as expected came off worse as that is just plain lead but even that has just got some dents in the tip due to the impact uh, the other two have got copper jackets so are a lot harder the 5.45 by 39 millimeter uh, is maybe very slightly flattened on the tip but negligible and the 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO uh, has no signs of being fired at all. So in conclusion yes you technically can fire bullets designed for firearms out of an air rifle but they wouldn't fit without modification, they did not perform well in terms of accuracy or power and they cost a couple of pounds per shot. So other than to prove that it can be done, it's pointless and there's really no reason to. So I hope you enjoyed the video, if so be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury and until next time, keep your arms in the air.